<laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us tonight. My name is Kat Young, and I'm a fourth year in the college studying public policy. I run for the cross country and track and field teams, and I'm also president of the Women's Athletic Association, which is the Female Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Together with Order of the Sea, we work to promote and serve UChicago Varsity Athletics. On behalf of all Chicago student athletes, I would like to thank President Zimmer, as well as Vice President for Campus Life and Student Services, Karen Warren Coleman, for being here this evening. And of course, thank you to our athletic director, Erin McDermott, for making this all possible. I would also like to thank our guest speaker, journalist and commentator for CNN and ESPN, Elsie Granderson, for sharing his time and thoughts with us. Looking out at all of you, I'm so proud of the success the Maroons have already experienced this season. Earlier this year, our football team was ranked in the top 25 nationally for the first time in the team's history. Two of our tennis players won the ITA Central Region Male and Female Singles Championship. Our women's soccer team is currently ranked second in the region. Our volleyball team is ranked 15th nationally. Women's cross country is ranked 11th nationally. And just this past week, four Maroons were named Athletes of the Week in both UAA and SAA. This event comes at an opportune time to keep this amazing momentum going while we look forward to the championship seasons and to the rest of the school year. Tonight, it is my honor to introduce President Zimmer. As student athletes, we are constantly learning what it means to be a leader, and the chance to hear from the leader of our university is an incredible one. To share with you a bit about President Zimmer. As most of you know, he became our university's 13th president in 2006. Before that, he was a faculty member and administrator of UChicago for more than two decades, serving as chairman on the mathematics department. President Zimmer received his BA, summa cum laude, from Brandeis University, and then went on to receive his PhD in mathematics from Harvard. He joined the UChicago faculty in 1977 as an L.E. Dixon instructor of mathematics. President Zimmer has also authored two books, as well as more than 80 mathematical research articles, and served as faculty of the US Naval Academy and held visiting positions at Harvard, as well as institutions in Israel, France, Australia, Switzerland, and Italy. He is also known for his commitment to all students of the university. And the fact that President Zimmer is here to speak tonight is a testament to his support of us as student athletes. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming President Zimmer. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me here this evening. It's wonderful uh, to see all of you here uh, to mark um, uh, this uh, moment of thinking about uh, the aims of athletics uh, and, um, and what it means in multiple ways. Uh, the topics of athletics really very rich one. I'm sure many of you have uh, thought about it in all sorts of ways, and I'm sure our uh, speaker uh, later on, as um, you know, is somebody who has uh, likewise thought about this and uh, discussed athletics in, in many ways. Uh, what I would like to do in just a few, these few minutes is say a few words about how I think about athletics in the context of uh, University of Chicago education, because I think it actually has an extremely important role, uh, and I think it's important to also uh, articulate what that is. Uh, on one hand, of, of course, uh, you're doing it in large measure because you love doing it, and it's simply uh, very gratifying and great fun, and you just feel good about it, and that's a great reason to be doing it, and um, uh, in some sense, that's enough. Uh, but there really is more uh, to the story, and I would just like to say a little bit about that. So just to start with a word about the University of Chicago education in general that you are now all uh, quite experienced with, uh, this, of course, is a very uh, serious intellectual environment. It's designed that way. It's been that way for 125 years. Uh, the entire focus on uh, rigorous inquiry, on challenge, on argument, uh, and so on has been the definition of what the University of Chicago has been about. But when you think about how that actually plays out and how that happens, uh, there are very interesting features of that. 
So first is uh, it, there's a uh, very significant community aspect to this. You don't go through this education all by yourself. You're with a group of people. You argue with them. Uh, you challenge each other. You learn a lot from each other, and that's terrific. Uh, but when you actually walk into a room and have to hand in a paper, it's your paper. When you have to take a test, it's your test. At the end of the day, even though you're learning an enormous amount from each other and participating together, your actual success is not dependent on somebody else's success, and their success is really not dependent on yours. Now, of course, in, uh, in a sports team, that's not the case at all, which is that in some sense, uh, your success is entirely dependent on everybody else's, and they're actually counting on you. So people are actually counting on each other and engaged in a common activity at a whole different level than what happens in, let's call the uh, sort of the main line of education, not just at the University of Chicago, but uh, really elsewhere. Now, why is this important? I mean, on one hand, you can say, well, that's just part of athletic teams, and that's great, and it's fun, but there's actually something uh, very powerful about it, and it, it's easy to say why it's so powerful, which is that the entire world of work takes place in organizations. They can be little organizations, they can be medium-sized, they can be big, and in those organizations, people's success is dependent on other people, and they're counting on you for their success. So the entire habit of mind to be thinking about uh, people counting on you for them to be successful and you counting on others in a totally different way uh, for you to be successful that you get in athletics is in fact exactly the habit of mind that you need to develop inside a world of uh, work. And for many people, uh, this transition from being a student to working has this transition as a big feature for them because it really is something that, that can be quite different. Uh, however, it's something that you have uh, already learned. Uh, it's something that you have uh, developed the habits of mind, the habit of spirit. Um, the, the habit of engagement that enable you to move into that environment very easily. Now, it's important not just because everybody's working in some sort of organization, but in fact, this issue about mutual dependency is particularly important uh, in a leadership environment. And in a leadership environment, you are dealing with a a uh, collection of people. They have different roles to play. Uh, they have different strengths. They have different weaknesses. The whole thing works only if, as a leader, you are able to get all of these people uh, integrated, working together, and your success is entirely dependent on them, and their success is dependent on you and on each other. So it's not just the fact that there are organizations that you're going to be working in, but that uh, leadership actually demands uh, a very uh, focused approach to this team orientation. Uh, I experience this every day. Uh, it's what my entire day's work uh, is like. And uh, it's the same for uh, all people in, um, in leadership positions of institutions or areas uh, that are uh, small and large. So one way of thinking about what athletics is doing is that it is providing a very important vehicle for connecting the very particular education that you have at the University of Chicago uh, to your future life. Again, it's not what your motivation, I suspect, is in doing this. You're doing it because you love it, which is great. Uh, but you're getting something more than just the satisfaction of doing something you love, which is that you are actually getting something that's going to be enormously valuable to you in connecting the 
amazing education you're getting to your uh, future life. So I'd like to just kind of finish up by expressing uh, appreciation of three things. Uh, first, uh, every time uh, you go out, uh, you are uh, representing the University of Chicago. Uh, you're doing this with a commitment to excellence. You're doing it with a uh, commitment to integrity. Uh, and I want to thank you for carrying out that representation of the university. Uh, we are very proud that you are doing this, and I know that you're doing it with, again, this great spirit of determination and absolute uh, integrity. Uh, the second thing I want to express appreciation for is that you chose this particular institution to be uh, thinking about in the context of athletics. Uh, there are a number of approaches to athletics, as you uh, very well know, inside higher education in the United States. Uh, Division III athletics has uh, what I would say is, um, is an extraordinary purity about it in the sense of, uh, of it genuinely being a place for student athletes, not for athletes who might be students. Uh, and I, again, want to express my appreciation that many of you had other choices uh, to actually choose this type of, um, of institution and this type of athletics program. Uh, the third thing I want to do is thank the uh, coaches, uh, the uh, entire team of um, the entire athletics um, uh, department, uh, Aaron McDermott's leadership, uh, this is, in fact, uh, a, a team effort, and in fact, all of your successes are, in fact, dependent upon theirs, and theirs are likewise uh, dependent on yours. Uh, so this is, uh, again, it's a wonderful thing to uh, see you here. I want to thank you again for uh, participating, and I want to wish you all lots of good luck over the coming year. Thank you very much. Good evening. You don't have to be so quiet. I actually think this would be a really fun place to do the Maroons cheer. Do you want to give it a try? Ma, what? Ma, what? Come on, Ma, what? All right. There you go. Now we're athletics. Okay. <laughs> I do, uh, I want to acknowledge first and foremost, um, Catherine Young, Cat. great job. I think we all should give her acknowledgement. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do and it takes a lot of preparation. So thank you, Cat, for doing that. Um, and I'm, I also need to acknowledge our vice president who is here. And before I do that, I just want to talk a little bit about campus and student life. Um, which is the unit at the university with which we are under and part of. And Campus and Student Life, for those of you who aren't aware, since you're probably not so much of the kind of makeup and structure of the university, is made up of 20 programs and services, including athletics, which is viewed by Vice President Coleman as a very important part of a larger whole. The University of Chicago and, as we call it, CSL, value and support student athletes and are proud of all that you achieve, both on and off the field. Vice President Coleman is a huge fan, actively following all of our teams and celebrating our successes, especially on Facebook. She always expresses to me how impressed she is by your accomplishments and the integrity with which you conduct yourself, something that President Zimmer just actually spoke about. And how about that? I didn't even tell him to talk about representation. That was pretty good. Please join me in thanking Vice President Coleman for her enthusiastic and proud support of Maroon Athletics. And I just want to ask her to stand. I'm not sure where she ended up settling. There she is. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so 
So since it's so rare for me, I have the honor to introduce our speaker, but before I do that, it's so rare for me to have this kind of occasion um, where all of you are gathered at the same time. I do want to just take a moment and say a couple of things. Um, first, that it's just such a privilege and honor of mine to serve in this role as your athletic director. And um, the biggest part of that is being part of your educational and personal growth process through athletics. It's really just such a precious thing and a labor of love uh, for all who work on your behalf in the department along with me. I also want to challenge you um, in this day and age where there's just so much flying around us and we're more tied to our gadgets and I see every day as I walk across this beautiful campus all of not just our students, but even um, those of us who work here, not taking in the surroundings around us and heads down, you know, thumbs going, um, just totally in other spaces. I want to challenge you for as much as you possibly can while you're here to engage in things real time. You will miss so much if you are always looking ahead to what's coming next or you're rehashing what's already happened. Be present, show up, and authentically be you every day. Strive to be your best self, which will be easiest when you are being you authentically. It's easier said than done, but so important. I am so proud of, of the successes and accomplishments that we have experienced together. I am also proud when you show grit and fortitude as our mascot Phil symbolizes the university emblem of the phoenix, rising from failure with resiliency. Falling and failing doesn't feel good, it hurts. But the willingness to continue showing up and owning our vulnerabilities makes us stronger. As Dr. Brene Brown discusses in her latest book, Rising Strong, it is the rise from falling that leads to our greatest achievements. Based on her research, being brave, falling, getting back up, and leaning into discomfort are the catalysts for rising strong and attaining whatever success means to you. Being athletes gives you a great advantage in this way. Own your experiences, the good, the bad, the scary, and you will reap the benefits from them in the greatest way. It is now my pleasure to introduce our Aims of Athletics speaker. Elsie Granderson hails from Detroit and is a contributor. <laughs> there you go, got some Detroit, some Detroit people. Contributor for ABC News, a senior writer for ESPN, a sport and political commentator, and a 2015 Institute of Politics Fellow. LZ previously worked with CNN and has been honored and recognized by the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association, the National Association of Black Journalists, the Human Rights Campaign, and for his work on ESPN Sports Center with a College Sports Media Award. You may have recently seen him covering major professional tennis events or participating on the roundtable segment of this week with George Stephanopoulos. I know that some of you were able to attend the IOP seminars that LZ hosted last spring that explored the intersection of sports, politics, and society. I did as well, and am thrilled that LZ was able to join us tonight between covering last night's Democratic debate and another commitment even tomorrow. Please welcome LZ Granderson, your 2015 Ames of Athletics speaker. Hey there. So awesome to be back on campus. I didn't spend very much time in this building, even though I was just across the street and just down the way. This is so boss. I kept looking around wondering if there were scenes of Game of Thrones shot in here or something like that. And then I was looking at the chair and I was like going, did Joffrey sit there? Is that where they shot it? It's very cool. Um, 
I'm particularly thrilled to uh, talk to student athletes because even though I do cover politics and I love politics, the truth of the matter is you are my people. <laughs> we get each other. Where are my basketball players at? Excellent, excellent. Where are my tennis players? Congratulations, awesome, awesome. Where are the single champions? Where, where, where are you two at? They tra oh, they're, oh, they're at nationals. They were too big for you. They're, they're out winning stuff on your behalf. No, Those are two sports that I cover for ESPN. They're also the two sports that I still enjoy playing. And I don't know if those of you who have also played pickup basketball or, or tennis in your lives and the other sports that you play, but I am a firm believer that you can tell a lot about a person by the way they play basketball and tennis, particularly basketball, right? like the people who make a mistake on the offensive end of the court and then don't run back. I just assume later in life they'll be the ones who won't be working hard in their jobs later. I assume the person who takes all the shots will be the ones taking all the credit in the office later. I'm assuming the one who plays defense and dives after the loose balls will be the one playing defense and diving after the loose balls and work later in life. And so I know for some people they may feel as if that's an overreach, I'm twice your age, I'm telling you, that ish is real. <laughs> Some of my colleagues, when we play pickup basketball, and the way that they play basketball is exactly the way they operate in the off, and I just go, uh-huh, you know I didn't foul you. And you know that was my idea two weeks ago. <laughs> it's very, very consistent. So the conversation I wanted to have with you briefly uh, is really directed uh, at, at, the, at the men. Not that I don't appreciate and respect uh, women in sports, it's just uh, some events have happened over these past couple of weeks and I feel the need that I need to talk to some of my brethren directly. Though I do believe at the end of it, the women may appreciate what I have to say. <laughs> and I might get my man card taken away, we'll see. <clears throat> So 40 years ago, 1975, the first female to go into a professional locker room was named Robin Herman. She was 23 years old. It was an NHL All-Star game, and she was working for the New York Times. Uh, 40 years ago, 1975, kind of a long time ago, kind of not a long time ago. Uh, the first female referee to referee a game was this year, 40 years later. Her name was, is, Sarah Thomas. Jen Welter was also the first assistant NFL coach to be employed and working in the game this year as well. So 40 years ago, we had the first female to be into a locker room. 40 years ahead, we have the first female ref in the game being an assistant coach. Where am I going with this? I'll let you know. This year, while I was covering the US Open, Eva Ezraki Moore became the first female to chair a men's championship game at the US Open. Like Robin Herman, 40 years before her, when the reporters came to her and wanted to interview her, saying, hey, what was it like to be the first female to do blah, 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 blah? She declined interviews, saying, the story isn't me, the story is the game. Focus on the game. That is what Robin Herman said 40 years ago. That is what Eva said right after the US men's match this year. The story isn't me, but the story is the game. Now. That's a little bit disingenuous, of course, right? When you are making history, you can't help but be part of that story. As we found out to this month, Jessica Men Mendoza, how many of you know this story? Kind of sickening, right? Became the first female to call a, ba a baseball playoff game, only to be greeted with sexism, particularly from an Atlanta sports radio jock who made some very, very disgusting remarks about her and the fact solely based upon the fact that she was a woman. 40 years ago, the first female walked into a locker room prepared for her job. 40 years later, Jessica Mendoza, flawless resume, doing her job, gets attacked for only one reason, because men like us have allowed this to fester during that 40 year gap. Human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. Anyone know who said that? Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Now, his words were great, 
I'm not saying that they lacked anything, but I would just like to add a couple of lines to it. So I don't know if that's like uh, borrowing or just straight up plagiarism. But what I will say is, I would say that the dedicated individual needs to be someone who is benefiting from the injustice that's currently in place. That the dedicated individuals is actually enjoying the benefits of the status quo that comes from being in power. Now, why is that so important? Well, let's look throughout social justice throughout the course of history in this country. Let's take, oh, I don't know, let's, let's do slavery. Uh, you know, I wasn't a slave, but I know black people didn't like that. I know that they fought and resisted it, but I also know that if it were not for the white people in power who were also fighting this unjust system, things would not have changed. I know when it comes to the issue of LGBT equality, I'm a gay man. I didn't like the idea that I could be fired simply for being gay, which was the case when I was first hired back in the 90s. Yeah, I'm that old. But I also know that if it wasn't for my heterosexual brothers and sisters also fighting against that injustice, the equality that I now enjoy today would not have come to pass. And so here we are talking about sports, talking about athletics. I'm a journalist, I'm in the media. I see the injustice that's still happening today with women in sports. And as a man that gets to enjoy my male privilege, I think it's a, morally obli a, a moral obligation that I resist the benefits of being a man in sports. That I speak out, that I speak for, and most importantly, that I shut up and listen when I need to. For better or for worse, athletes, particularly male athletes, are worshiped in our culture. The phrase big man on campus has very little to nothing to do with your GPA, as you all know. Even on a campus like the University of Chicago where you think sports doesn't really matter, the fact of the matter is that 15, 20 years from now, in your office, when new colleagues find out that you were a student athlete, even in a Division III school, watch their response. You're the gladiators. You're still worshipped. The question is, what are you going to do with that power? Now, some athletes choose to use that power to benefit themselves, and there's nothing wrong with it. I like a little bravado. I like beast mode. I like the fact that it's all about me. Some athletes like to do things like protect the status quo. You know, I remember uh, reading stories about Robin when she walks into the locker room and how the coaches would say, I don't care what equal rights they're talking about. I don't want a woman in this locker room. Unfortunately for them, they're still on the record on the wrong side of history. And then there's the opportunity to use that power to challenge the status quo, to work towards that human progress that Dr. King talked about those years ago. In all of my years in journalism, particularly sports journalism, I've had exactly two female bosses. Everyone else were men. And I would sit back and I would watch them be second guessed at every single turn by men that I cannot find any better description than sex as idiots. I mean, one of my bosses, when you looked at her resume, it was impeccable, absolutely impeccable. She would give you know, hand out an assignment, walk out of the room, and the men would begin to mock her. Now, back then, I was a bit of an ideological weakling, and I didn't have the courage to speak out. So in my silence, I basically gave a nod of approval to that sexist behavior, those remarks and ideas. I am proud to say I'm not that person today, which is why I feel comfortable in saying that it's so important that you, the guys in this room, look at your sisters and you defend them on their behalf on, even when they're not in the room. Anyone can stand up when other people are looking and challenge the status quo. The question is, what do you do when it's just all guys? What do you do when you're flipping the television and the WNBA game is on and the remarks start to come out? That's when you start to use that power of being an athlete, of being a gladiator, to work towards human progress. 
So sports may not be huge a part of the University of Chicago sports or overall culture, but that doesn't make any of you immune to some of the, dyna the dynamics that stipulates that men are still inherently better. So I encourage you, go to the women's games, take your buddies, encourage your female colleagues when you graduate and you go on to whatever field you happen to be working in. Be comfortable enough in your own skin to know that you don't have to make anyone lesser in order for you to be more. Be courageous enough to challenge the way that things are, even when no one else is looking. And be man enough to shut up and listen when everyone is looking at you. Forty years ago, Robin had an opportunity that no other woman had had. And that opportunity came to pass for two reasons. One, she was ready and prepared. And two, there were men around her courageous enough to challenge the way things are, the way things were. You are all athletes. You are the culture's gladiators. What are you going to do with your power? Thank you. Thank you, LZ. So on behalf of uh, all of us, we have a little, we have some gear. Yeah. Everybody loves gear. And as um, LZ said, he is a, uh, still a basketball player, tennis player, recreator. So um, you're actually getting some of our very privileged practice gear that not Sweet. many people get. So you can check it out. Is it pre-war? No. no, it's new, it's brand new. <laughs> So we gave him the long ones. Yeah. He got the long ones. I know you, you know, you guys had told me the first year when we were ordering these you wanted short shorts, and I thought you were crazy. So then last year I found out you wanted long shorts. I said, okay, that's what I expected. So we got those in year two. So now hopefully everybody's straight. Uh, so thank you um, for being here. I know we asked you to be here. Um, it's just such a privilege to bring you all together, have this time together. We don't get these opportunities very often. To have President Zimmer come and talk to all of us is such an honor. And to have someone like LZ Granderson who is able to come here and spend some time with you. And also again to acknowledge our Vice President Karen Warren Coleman for also joining us here for this event. So, um, you're actually getting out of here a little early. Look at that, we're giving you some extra time to maybe grab some more to eat and get your work done. So continue doing all the great things that you're doing, representing us with integrity, competing with integrity, and I'm sure we will continue to have great success as we are coming into the tail end of our fall seasons, crazy to think. And um, we are entering our winter season's first day of some winter practices tomorrow. Pretty crazy. So I know, very exciting. So we're getting into our winter, winter sports. Good luck to everyone. Go Maroons.